Welcome to New Hope Kauai. Please join the men of God as we celebrate the reason for the season, our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. Stay by my cradle to 
them up with this song, Our God. Thank you, Father. Water you turn into wine. You open the eyes of the blind. There's no one like you. There's none like you. And into the darkness we shine. Out of the ashes we rise, there's no one like you, there's none like you, and our God is greater, our God is stronger, God you are higher than any other, our God is healer. So awesome in power, our God, our God. And into the darkness He shines. Out of the ashes we rise. There's no one like. None like you, and our God is greater, our God is stronger, God you are higher than any other, our God is healer, so awesome in power, our God, our God, our God is greater. Our God is stronger, God you are higher than any other, our God is healer, so awesome in power, our God, our God, and if our God is for us, then who could ever stop us, and if our God is with us, then what could stand against, and if our God is for us, then who could ever stop us? And if our God is with us, then what could stand against? What could stand against? What could stand against? What could stand against? Our God is greater. Our God is stronger, God you are higher than any other, our God is healer, so awesome in power, our God, our God. Aloha everyone and mele kaliki maka. Welcome once again to New Hope Kauai Church Online. So glad that you were able to make it today. We are excited about the message that the Lord has for us now. Remember, it's super important that we all stay connected. And you can do that by going on our website and checking out all the new activities, all the new um, things that are going on there. We also keep up with our Instagram page and our Facebook. So stay connected with us. That would be great. And mahalo so much to all of you who continue to give to the Lord through New Hope Kauai. We are honored and blessed that you would continue to do so here. Let's bow our heads to pray for the tithes and offerings. Heavenly Father, 
Thank you so, so much. You are such a good, good God. And we are just honored to be a part of the work that you're doing. We pray, Lord God, that you would bless all the tithes and the offerings that come into New Hope Kauai. We pray that you would bless it and let it be expanded and multiplied for your kingdom. We also pray that you would bless the giver, Lord God, place joy in their hearts, uh, uh, bless them aboundingly as, as you are able, Lord God. We just thank you so much for opening up the storehouses of heaven on their behalf. Would you bless those who are in need? Would you help them to be comforted and be blessed during the Christmas season, Father? We thank you so much for your son, Jesus, who came during this time as we remember as a child into this world to bear our burdens and, and redeem us. We thank you so much for your loving kindness. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Hey, what's up, everybody? What's up, family? What's up, church? Hey, thank you for joining us once again. Mele Kaliki Maka. Merry Christmas from, from my ohana to, to your ohana. Hey, I hope and pray that, that this holiday season has been incredible for you. In fact, I hope and pray that this entire 2021 has been incredible for you. Okay, I know for a fact, I know for certain it hasn't been perfect, but, but I do hope and pray that, that you learned whatever lesson you needed to learn in 2021, and that more importantly, church, you, you received a revelation of our Heavenly Father like never before. Amen. Hey, I want to get right into the Word today. I got so much I want to share with you. I want to get right into it. And I don't have a traditional Christmas message today for you, okay? I don't have a traditional Christ mess message, but Jesus Christ, He's always in my message. And so I want to get right into it. And I want to look today at a series of four different stories, okay? Four different events that involve the same main character. And I believe the Spirit is going to reveal to us something today that's going to change our lives, that's going, going to improve and change our relationship with our Heavenly Father. Okay, now I want to give you some context so you understand what's happening. In, in the book of 2 Kings, Second Kings, old school, Old Testament, the prophet Elisha, okay, he visits the town of Shunem. And, and while he's there, he befriends a woman and her husband. Okay, now this couple, They've grown very fond of Elisha, okay? so much so that, that they add on an extension to their home. Okay? They add on a Ohana unit so that the prophet Elisha has a place to stay when he comes to Shunem. Now, the problem is this, this couple, they're very wealthy, but, but they don't have a son. A son that they very much desire to have. And so this is where we pick up in our first story today. 2 Kings chapter 4, starting in verse 14, the NLT says this, Later, Elisha asked Gehazi, What can we do for her? Gehazi replied, she, she doesn't have a son, and her husband is an old man. Call her back, Elisha told him. And when the woman returned, Elisha said to her, As she stood in the doorway, Next year at this time, you will be holding a son in your arms. No, my lord, she cried. Oh man of God, don't deceive me. Don't get my hopes up like that. Verse 17, but sure enough, the woman soon became pregnant. And at that time, the following year, she had a son, just as Elisha had said. So, so in this first story, in this first event, this woman, she experiences the fulfillment of hope. Okay, remember that? That's important. Now, a few years go by and her son is older and he's out in the field one day working with his father when all of a sudden he starts to complain about a headache. He starts telling everybody, my head hurts, my, my head hurts. And so the servants that are with him, they, they grab him and they take him to his mom. And, and if you can imagine, he's, he's on his mom's lap. She's holding him. She's probably rocking him, trying to comfort him, trying to console him, but, but suddenly and, and sadly, what happens is while he's in his mom's arm, he dies. Now, the mom, as you can imagine, she's heartbroken, she's grief-stricken, and so she calls for the prophet Elisha, right? And when he comes, this is what it says, starting in verse 32. It says, when Elisha arrived, the child was indeed dead, lying there on the prophet's bed. 
He went in alone and shut the door behind him and prayed to the Lord. Then he laid down on the child's body, placing his mouth on the child's mouth, his eyes on the child's eye, and his hands on the child's hands. And as he stretched out on him, the child's body began to grow warm again. Elisha got up, walked back and forth across the room once, and then stretched himself out again on the child. This time, the boy sneezed seven times and opened his eyes. So, so in this second story, the same woman now, she experiences a, a, a healing. More specifically, she experiences a resurrection. Okay? That's important. Remember that? Now we fast forward a few verses and there is so much war happening in the land, church. So much war happening that, that the people are on the verge of a famine. And, and so the prophet Elisha, he too has grown, has grown fond of this woman. And so he goes to find her. He finds her, and when he does, he tells her this in chapter 8, starting in verse 1. He says, Take your family and move to some other place, for the Lord has called for a famine on Israel that will last for seven years. Verse 2, So the woman did as the man of God instructed. She took her family and settled in the land of the Philistines for seven years. So in this story, this same woman, she experiences protection. In our fourth and final story, the, the famine finally comes to an end and this woman, she returns to her homeland only to discover that everything she once owned has been lost. And remember, she's a wealthy woman. Everything she once owned has been rummaged, has been lost. And so what she does is she goes to the king. She goes to the king of Israel in an attempt to, to reclaim everything that was once hers. And when this king discovers all that the prophet Elisha has done for her, this is what the king says. Listen, listen to what it says. Verse six. So he directed one of his officials to see that everything she had lost was restored to her. Mm. So in this final event, this same woman, she experiences restoration. Okay, let's, let's recap real quick. In the first story, this woman experiences the fulfillment of hope. In the second story, she experiences a resurrection. In the third story, she experiences protection. In the fourth story, she experiences restoration. Same woman, four different events, four different experiences. Mm, let me say that again. This is the same woman. She goes through four different events. Four different problems, four different challenges and obstacles. She has four different experiences. And family, I want to speak today simply from this subject. Here it is. Oval no. Oval no. The, the English translation, I am. Let's pray. Pulikako, Heavenly Father, we thank you for today, Lord. We humbly come before you in this moment. And I'm asking, Lord, humbly that you would bring a word today, that your spirit would be on this word, that it would reveal something to your people that will change their hearts, that will change their perspective, that will change their relationship with you. We thank you for Jesus. We thank you for your son, Jesus. We give you all the glory in his name. We all said, amen, amen, amen. So family, if we can just be honest today, if we can just get real, I don't have a story for you. I don't have jokes for you. I just want to get down to business and be honest. You know, when I think about this past year that we've been through, and I think about this past pandemic season we've been, to, been through, it's been long. I would agree. <laughs> it's been hard. It's been exhausting. It's been frustrating, disappointing. It's been tiring and draining. It's been discouraging. It has been so many unfavorable things, absolutely, all right? But, but hear me, church, despite all of that, despite all of that, I truly believe that the Lord has been using this pandemic purposely. Let me say that again. God has been using this pandemic purposely. And when I think about that and I reflect back on that, what I've discovered is that God has been using this pandemic to teach me something new, about me. <laughs> Come on, church. God has been using this pandemic to teach me something new about me. 
He's been using this pandemic to teach us something new about us. Okay, God has been using this pandemic to, to show us a different side of us that we've never seen, a different side of us that we never knew existed, all right? Hear me, God, God has been using this pandemic to introduce you to a new you that you never knew. Ooh, let me say that again. God has been using this pandemic to introduce you to a new you that you never knew. Come on, church, a stronger you, a better you, a wiser you, a more resilient you, a more persevering you, a more persistent you, a more faithful you, a more committed you, a, a kinder you, a more compassionate you, a more understanding you, a you that is needed and necessary to take you to the next level that God has in store for you. Come on, church. I say God has been using this pandemic to introduce you to a new you that is needed necessary and required to take you to the next level, to the next assignment that God has in store for you. Can somebody say amen to that? Church, I'm learning so many things about myself that I never knew. Okay, good and bad. Let's, let's get real. Good and bad. I, I've discovered some things and I'm like, ooh, Brother Paris, you, you got to work on that. You a little bit kolohe over there. You a little bit rotten in that area. You got to work on that. And at the same time, I'm learning things. So I'm like, you know what? I can cook better than I thought. No, I'm just kidding. You know what? I'm not as bad as I thought. I'm doing, I'm doing better than I think I am. I, I've, I've been seeing things about myself that I never knew. So I believe that. I believe God has been using this pandemic to teach us something new about us. But with that being said, I also truly believe that that in and of itself, although that is a part of the purpose of this pandemic, in this season, it is not the primary purpose. Can you hear me? That is a part of it, but that's not the primary purpose of it. What if, family? What if? What if the primary purpose of this pandemic hasn't been to introduce something new about you or to reveal something new about you, about me? But, but what if? The primary purpose has been to reveal something new about God. Come on. In, in our story today, in our stories today, it's the same woman. She goes through four different events. And she has four different experiences of God. Mm, don't miss that. It's the same woman. She goes through four different events she faces four different problems, four different, different challenges, and she has four different experiences of God. And with every experience, with every event, it was an opportunity for God to reveal himself to her in a new way. Oh, come on. With everything she went through, it was an opportunity for God to reveal himself to her in a new way. Make no mistake about it. The prophet Elisha, he's a representative of God. He is operating and working on behalf of God. So what you see the prophet Elisha do for this woman is actually the Lord doing for this woman, all right? And in the first story, in the first event, God was her hope. In the second story, God was her resurrector. In the third story, God was her protector. And, and in the fourth story, God was her restorer. Same woman, four different problems. Four different opportunities for God to reveal to her that he's always the answer. Come on, church. Come on. Same woman. Four different problems. Four different challenges. All right, Four different complications. Four different mountains in front of her. Four different opportunities for God to reveal himself to her in a new way way in a way that she would not have experienced had she not gone through those events family hear my heart today hear me who has god been trying to show you he is that you never knew he was come on during this pandemic who has god been trying to show you he is that you never knew he was i'm gonna say that one more time who has god who has our heavenly father been trying to show you he is that you never knew he was? Who has he been trying to show you he is that you never knew he could be? 
Who has he been trying to show you who he is that you never knew you needed him to be family? Who has our heavenly father been trying to show you he is that you never knew he was? Mm. Family, maybe, just maybe, you are going through what you are going through because God wants you to experience a side of him you never knew existed. Maybe you are going through what you are going through. You are facing what you are facing. Because God sees you are ready to experience a different side of him. A side of him you never knew about. Okay, not, not a side of him that you read about. Not a side of him that you've heard preached about. Come on, not a side of him that you've heard someone else's testimony about. But a side of him that you yourself, not secondhand, firsthand, that you yourself are ready to know about. Come on church, who is God? Who has God been trying to reveal to you he is? that you never knew he was. I just want to be honest today, fam. This season, let's get real, this season, to some extent, has sucked. Facts, 100%. This season, to some extent, it hasn't been that great. Many aspects of it hasn't been. But you know what we learn that is so powerful from this Shunammite woman? You know what we learn is that no matter what she went through, I mean, go and read it for yourself, but no matter what she went through, all the different events she had to put up with, you know what she never did? She never complained. Go, go read it for yourself. That's so powerful. No matter what she went through, she never complained. And so she always remained in God's will. Mm, and this is a word for somebody. Hear me. Don't disqualify yourself from experiencing a new side of our God because you're too busy complaining about the season you in. Ooh, that's a word for somebody. Come on, that's a word for somebody. Don't disqualify yourself from experiencing our God in a new way, from seeing a side of Him that you have never seen because you're too busy. You're too preoccupied complaining about the season you are in, family. There, there are new aspects of our God that can only be experienced in the midst of new adversity. Thank you, Holy Spirit. There are new parts of our Father, new aspects of our Father that can only be experienced in the midst of new adversity. There are new, there are new sides of Him. There are new qualities of Him that you can only experience in the midst of new circumstances. And so hear my heart. God will take you through life's ups and downs. God will take you through life's ups and downs. Why? To know Him better. Ooh. God will take you through life's ups and downs. Why? To know Him more. And so maybe, maybe we are all going through what we are going through because God sees we are ready to know him better, we are ready to know him more. Who has God been trying to show you he is that you never knew he was? If I can just speak personally, I did not know that God was Jehovah Jireh until I found myself in a season where I needed provision. I did not know that he was Jehovah Shalom until I found myself in a season where I needed some peace. I did not know that God was Jehovah Shammah until I found myself in a season where I was lonely. I did not know that he was Jehovah Rapha until I needed some healing. I did not know that he was Jehovah Nisi until I needed a victory. I did not know that he was rest until I needed rest. I did not know that he was forgiveness until I needed to be forgiven. I did not know that God is love until I needed to be loved. I did not know that Jesus Christ was my savior until I found myself in a position in life, in a state of life, in a season in my life where I needed to be saved. Who has God? Whew. Who has God? been trying to show you he is, that you never knew he was. Church, we know that Jesus Christ is the reason for the season. We know that. 
Everybody's saying that. Everybody's teaching you that. Every preacher is saying that. It's true. It's facts. 100%. He is the reason for the season. But, but, but who is he for you every other season? Better question. Who has he been for you in every other season? Maybe you were unaware. Maybe you did not know. But who has he been for you in every other season? You see, the reassurance that God wants to give you today, family, is that when you find yourself in a season like this Shunammite woman, where you are saying, oh, who, who is my hope? God is reassuring you today. Oh, vow no, I am. When you find yourself in a season like this Shunammite woman, where you are asking, who is my resurrector? God is saying today, he's reassuring you today. Oh, vow no, I am. When you find yourself in a season where you are asking, who, who is my protector? God is reassuring you today. Oh, vow no, I am. When you find yourself in a season where you are asking, who is my restorer? Who is my redeemer? God is reassuring you today. Oh, vow no, I am. When you find yourself in a season where you are asking, who will lead me? Who will guide me? Who is a light in the darkness, a lamp to my feet? Who will never leave me nor forsake me? God is reassuring you today, oh vow, no, I am. Every day, in everything, every day, in everything, Jesus is saying today, I am the way. I am the truth. I am the light. O vow no, I am. Amen. Hey, family, I hope you received this word today. I truly do. It was quick. It was hot, but it's powerful. Reflect on it. Meditate on it. Go ahead and read this scripture. Check it for yourself. Allow the Spirit to speak to you. You're going to see. And I want to encourage you. When you face challenges, because you will, change your perspective on it. Change the way you're looking at it, because it is an opportunity for our Heavenly Father to reveal Himself to you in a new way. It is an opportunity for you to experience our Father in a new way. Amen. Family, I hope you received this word. I want to I pray for you at this time as I quickly close. I want to pray for just that, that you would experience our God in a new way, that you would see a side of him that, that you have never seen. And I want to pray for you specifically like how the Apostle Paul prayed for the church in Ephesus. When he asked the Spirit to give them wisdom and revelation for one main purpose, church, hear me? For one main purpose, to know God better. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, we thank you for today, Lord. And I thank you for this word, Lord. I thank you for this word. And I want to pray right now, Father, that everyone who is listening to this right now, Lord, that they will reflect, that they will look back on this season, and that you would reveal to them who you have been throughout this season, that they would not ignore it, that they would acknowledge it, that you would reveal it to them, that in every way, whatever they need you to be, Father, you are that, you are there. That when we need peace, you are peace. When we need rest, you are rest. When we need protection, you are protection, Father. Reveal to your people. Open the eyes of their hearts, Lord, so that they can see every day, in every way, in everything, you are in the midst of it all, Lord. That you are always there by our side. You are always there watching over us, Father. We thank you for this word. I pray for your people and that we would finish this year strong. And I pray that we would walk into next year even stronger, that we would walk into next year ready for what you have in store for us. Father, we thank you for your son, Jesus. We thank you for the gift of your son, Jesus. We thank you for Jesus. We say all of this in his mighty, mighty name. We all said, amen.
Amen, amen. Hey, church, God bless you. We love you. Merry Christmas. Aloha. Well, mahalo so much for being with us. Another wonderful message from the Lord. Thank you so much for joining us today. Thank you for spending this time together. Again, connect with us on our website. Find out what the new happenings are there. Um, check us out on our Instagram page and Facebook. Have a wonderful, wonderful week in the Lord. Take that joy, take that light, take that peace, take that hope and spread it to those around. Have a great one.